Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. If you are even the slightest lover of makeup and beauty and skincare, you are well aware that it is time for the Sephora Holiday Savings Event. This savings event happens twice a year. You must be part of Sephora's Beauty Insider program to take part in the sale. And I will have all of the information down below in the description box as far as the dates for each tier level. As many of you know, with the Beauty Insider program, there are three tiers. When you first sign up, you are an insider. And then when you hit a certain spending tier, you will become a VIB. And then if you spend even more money at Sephora, you become a VIB Rouge. And Rouge tier members can shop the sale earlier than VIB and insiders. Rouge tier also receives 20% off while the VIBs get 15% off and insiders get 10% off. The savings event starts for Rouge in the next couple of days. I haven't decided if I'm putting this video up two days before or one day before the event starts. But regardless, I think if you have clicked on this video, you have at least some interest in shopping this savings event. So I am here to give you, as always, my recommendations. Now, because I do upload a video like this, twice a year when the event comes around. I do at least try to make my video a little bit different than everybody else's. So this time I was thinking that I would just show you all of my top drawer or top shelf products. So let's get into my Sephora recommendations showing you only my current must have top drawer, top shelf, best of the best products. I just got back from a work trip to Los Angeles and I thought what better place to start than showing you what I actually have in my travel makeup bag from Sephora because obviously if I am traveling with these products, I really, really like them. I had quite a few different types of events to go to. I had a conference, I had parties, I had a meeting to go to, a professional meeting. So I needed to be able to do different looks for each event. So these are the two eyeshadow palettes I brought with me. They look a little rough, especially this one. I am so glad that Makeup by Mario brought back out the Ethereal Eyes palette. Clearly mine is not new. I purchased this the first time it came out. And again, I'm so, so glad he brought it back. Get it while you can. I have a feeling it's going to sell out during the savings event because why wouldn't it? It is fabulous. And if you can save some money on it, even better. These are the same two palettes that I brought with me when I went to Hawaii for my birthday in May. I can seriously do any type of look with just these two palettes. The other one is the Master Mattes. And what I love about this is not only the variety of mattes that are in here, I love how compact it is, and pretty much with all of the eye looks I do, I incorporate either a dark brown or a black, and also always a little bit of an off-white or ivory to place right underneath the arch of my brow. So this clearly has all mattes. This has a beautiful combination of mattes and some of the most beautiful shimmers you will ever find. They almost give a wet look to the lids. And in my opinion, they don't emphasize texture. I'm 50 years old. I no longer have really firm eyelids. My eyes are also hooded and getting more hooded with each passing year. So this palette has really proven to be a little workhorse for me. Now you might be thinking, Risa, are there any others you recommend or is it just those two? Well, once again, we are talking about top shelf, top drawer products only. And the only other two that I do currently have in my top drawer for eyeshadows are the matte palette from Patrick Ta that I feel like I've spoken about ad nauseum in my videos recently. I just love this one so much. The only reason why I don't travel with this one is because I just like the compactness of this one. There's no way I'm fitting this into my makeup bag, which by the way is from Say Beauty. It was sent to me in a PR package. I don't know if they actually sell it, but it's a great bag. So I keep this in my top drawer as well as the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude eyeshadow palette. 
This palette is also incredibly stunning, but now that I'm looking at them side by side, they are sort of similar. So you probably don't need them both, but if you're trying to decide between the two, you really can't go wrong with either. Up next, since we are talking about eyes, why don't we just talk about mascara? Most of you know that I am a falsies girl. I love my false lashes. I came out with my own range of false lashes with BK Beauty. So mascara isn't quite as important to me as it is to most people. That said, I do really, really like this Lancome Edole Mascara. Oh, what I was going to say is that I typically stick to drugstore mascaras because I'm always wearing some sort of lash, half lash, individual lashes. So affordable drugstore mascaras suit me just fine. They get the job done. But when I don't wear falsies, I either use the Chanel La Volume or this Lancome Edole Mascara. And I do have it in the travel size and it went in my travel bag. For eyeliner, I brought with me the Makeup by Mario in brown. As you can see, I've used almost all of it. However, since I've discovered the Rare Beauty gel eyeliner, I have pretty much stopped using this. The only reason why this is in my travel bag and not the Rare Beauty is because I misplaced my Rare Beauty eyeliner. I used it to film a tutorial about a week or two ago, and since then I have been unable to locate it. And if for some reason I can't locate it, I will be buying a new one. That Rare Beauty eyeliner is so great it really is one of the few I have found that stay in the waterline, whether you're tight lining or watering the lower, watering, lining the lower lash line. It is one of the only ones that stays. This one does a decent job, but not as great as the Rare Beauty. Next up out of the bag are my contour and bronzer. This is the Give Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. This is the shade Toastin. I also have it in Smokin'. What I love about this is that you get your contour and bronzer in just one palette. I also personally really, really like the scent. It has this very light, clean suntan lotion slash baby powder fragrance to it. Now, obviously that's going to be a turnoff for some of you, but I happen to really, really like it. And I happen to really, really like this product. The contour is absolutely perfect. The contour shade, I should say, is absolutely perfect for anyone with light skin. And the bronzer matches up with it perfectly. So you can use the bronzer to set the contour or just to bronze up your entire face. And this particular duo is so neutral. You don't have to worry about it looking gray or muddy. It is honestly my most reached for contour bronzer product. Now for a separate bronzer, I adore this Gucci bronzer. I have raved about this bronzer in multiple videos. It is definitely a splurge, but I think it is one of the most beautiful bronzers on the market. You really feel luxurious even just using this product. Okay, let's talk about powders. I brought two powders with me. The first one being the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless. I will never ever stop raving about this powder. I recommend it to everyone. It has probably been in every single one of my Sephora sale holiday savings event recommendations lists for the past four years maybe. In my opinion, this is one of the best pressed powders you can buy. However, I do also really, really enjoy the one from Lawless and this one is talc free if that is something that is important to you. And I know that it is for a lot of people. This is a skin smoothing perfecting powder. It will instantly take away shine and smooth the look of large pores and texture. And then for loose powder, I took my Givenchy Prism Libre. This will also come as no surprise to a lot of you. I adore this powder. I have it in two shades, number one and number two. But I also 
have been raving for several years about the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. I would say that if you're attempting to choose between these two, if you have more mature, dry skin, I would do the Givenchy. If you have oiliness at all, whether you have mature skin or not, if you are combo to oily, I would go for the Huda Beauty. I know a lot of you wanna hear about foundations and we are inching closer to those, but first we're going to talk about brows. For that, I actually brought out my top drawer brow bin. So these are my four favorites. I have the Lawless Shape Up Soft Fill Brow Pencil in the shade Blonde. Next up is the one I'm wearing today, which is the Patrick Ta Brow Pencil. I also have this in the shade Blonde. Then there is the Hourglass Arch Brow. I use the shade Platinum Blonde in this. And then lastly, the Give Hella On Point Brow Pencil. I actually own shades one, two, and three, but I find myself reaching for one or three more often than two. You know what, since they're in the same bin, let's talk about concealers. These are my current favorites. From Sephora. I do have some more affordable options, but this is a Sephora recommendations video, so we're not going to talk about those in this video. That's for another time. These are the top three. These are the ones that I reach for all the time. The one from Culfi or Culfi, I will never remember to look up how this is pronounced before I do a video. I have talked about this concealer so often and every single time I'm like, Culfi, Culfi? Why don't I know this by now? Regardless, I love this concealer and I know a lot of people have stopped talking about it. It was pretty popular when it first launched, but I think in the past three or four months, like 10 new concealers have launched at Sephora. It's like every other week, influencers have a new favorite. And because it is part of my job to try those new concealers that come out, I think the fact that I'm still talking about this one says a lot about it. And I'm just going to tell you right off the bat what I love about all three of these concealers is that I find them to be creamy, hydrating, long-lasting, have an excellent color range. Everything that I look for in a concealer I can get with one of these three. So anyone out there who would come to me and say, Risa, what concealer should I get from the Sephora event slash sale? I would recommend one of these three because they are my top, top, top favorites in the top drawer. So in the Culfi, Culfi, I gotta put my glasses on to read you the shade name. Although I will have the shade names listed down below in the description box. I use Coco Crush, and what I really, really like about this shade in particular is that it does have a little bit of a peachy tone to it, so it helps to neutralize the bluish purple tint that a lot of us have, aka dark circles right here. I feel like I don't need to use any sort of corrector when I use this concealer. The other two that I adore are the Givenchy concealer, it's the Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer. My shade in this one is C180. Oh yeah, they do have numbers and not names. So this is C180, which is described as what? Oh, there it is, C180, light with cool undertones. And then lastly, I use the Natasha Denona High Glam Brightening and Hydrating Medium to Full Coverage Crease Proof Serum Concealer. And I'm currently using the shade N4 in this one. Okay, since we've talked about concealers and powders, why don't we go to primers and foundations? Now, because I am always totally honest with you, my current top drawer, top shelf favorite primers are not from Sephora. They are either from the drugstore or from Amazon. And I will have those listed down below in the description box. My regular viewers know exactly what those primers are. But if I had to choose a couple from Sephora, and now, please keep in mind, I am basing this on my skin type, which is oily. 
because I no longer work on clients. If you're new here, I was a freelance makeup artist for more than 20 years. So I have worked on, you know, every skin type, every skin tone, every age over the years. However, since I've started just doing YouTube full time, I don't work on other people. So I can't say what products are best for dry skin because I don't have dry skin. I can only say whether or not I think they would work for combination to dry or dry skin. And that's just me being as honest as I possibly can be because I don't want to say, yeah, this is going to work fabulous on your drier than the desert skin and then you try it and it just is awful. So yes, that was a very long-winded way of me saying, take my recommendations for primers and foundations, not with a grain of salt, but maybe with a grain of salt, with the knowledge that I have oily skin. First up is the Makeup Forever Pore Minimizing Primer. If you have extremely large pores like I do, this is going to definitely, definitely help with pore smoothing. I also really like this Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Primer. This one helps with not only pore size, but also shine. And now this last primer recommendation can actually be worn by everyone, all skin types. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Invisible UV Flawless Primer. This has a broad spectrum SPF of 50. This is a great primer for my light makeup days or my no makeup makeup days when I'm in a hurry and I just want to put on a quick face. This will provide me with some sun protection as well as hydration. It's very, very lightweight. It's not heavy or sticky. It works beautifully under makeup because it was meant to be used under makeup. Now here we go, foundations. The one I took with me to LA, I brought the Smashbox Always On Foundation. Okay, so I messed up. I did not realize until after I recorded this video that while Sephora does carry Smashbox, they do not carry this particular foundation. It is currently only available at Ulta. I have an entire video dedicated to this foundation, comparing it to my other favorite, Estee Lauder Double Wear. These two are foundations that if you need your makeup to last 12, 14, 16 plus hours, you're going to want one of these long wears. Now, if you do have drier skin, I would recommend for long wear the NARS Radiant Long Wear Foundation. I'll put an image up somewhere on the screen. And the reason why I say that is because I follow a lot of other influencers and makeup artists or makeup artists turned influencers like myself and they a lot of times still work on clients who have very, very dry skin. And it is one of those foundations that I see consistently being raved about by other makeup artists for mature skin. So keep that one in mind. Also, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I love that foundation and I do wear it for special occasions. However, if you are oily, it's not the best. It is not the best for us. If you have tried that foundation and you have oily skin, you probably are shaking your head, oh yeah, because unless your skin is prepped really, really well with a mattifying or shine control primer, plus powder, plus setting spray, you are not getting that foundation to last more than four, maybe five hours. At least that's been my experience. However, I love the way it looks when it's first applied. And I love the way it looks on other people who don't have oily skin and they've been wearing it for 10, 12 hours. Their skin just always looks so, so flawless. It is just such a beautiful foundation. And yes, they do make the power fabric. Armani makes a power fabric foundation that is supposed to be the counterpart to Luminous Silk for those of us with combo to oily skin, but for the price especially, I would go for one of these two or, or one of these two. The Hourglass Airbrush. This is another beautiful long wearing foundation or the Lancome Tante Idole Ultra Wear. But this one kind of moves into the combination to slightly dry category as well because both of these, I think, will feel comfortable even on drier skin, meaning that they contain ingredients that are more hydrating, that keep your skin feeling just 
more comfortable while still giving you really good coverage. None of these foundations are sheer. That is just not what I find myself reaching for. I know, I know most of my audience is like, no, Risa, we want sheer. We don't want those full coverage foundations. It's not that I don't try light, sheer, skin-like foundations. I do, I'm just never really happy with them. Now that said, I do really like the Fenty Skin Tint, but once again, in the spirit of being honest, I would recommend if you have dry skin and you're looking for foundation reviews or recommendations for this Sephora event, I would check out another influencer, someone who has dry skin or someone who likes really sheer skin-like foundations. And I completely forgot about sunscreen. My favorite from Sephora is this one from Innisfree. It's affordable and effective. What more can you ask for? Um, let's talk about blush. This is so hard. This is one of the categories like lipsticks and like glosses that changes up probably the most. However, I did bring out the blushes that I took on my trip and then also some others that I just find myself reaching for the most lately. So in my LA bag, I have the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Joy. A lot of people talk about the shade Happy, which is a really pretty baby doll pink. This one is a little bit more peachy leaning coral. I just find it to be really beautiful on my skin tone. And then I also brought this Valentino blush that I am crazy about. It is the one I currently have on. This is the shade five. It is simply a stunning kind of sunburnt pink with a hint of red. I feel like this shade would look beautiful on everyone. I just love blush and I really, really like the look of a just in from the cold flushed cheek. And this one really gives you that. As does this one from Danessa Myricks. This is the Yummy Skin in Rosé and Brunch. This is a fantastic multi-purpose product. You can use this on your cheeks as well as your lips. It is a gorgeous, just bitten, rosy pink lip color. And it's great for travel because, as I just said, you can use it on your cheeks and your lips. And who doesn't love a multitasking product? And so I wouldn't go down the rabbit hole of showing you all of my favorite blushes from Sephora. Maybe someday I will. I just chose one more, one more blush to share with you and recommend. Actually, that's a lie. It's a set of three blushes. While they don't come as a set, I just couldn't pick a favorite. I love all of these newly reformulated Dior Rosy Glow blushes. In the new formula, I have Cherry, I have Rosewood, and I have Coral. Why don't I have the original pink as a favorite? That's because I have it in the older formula, and I just didn't love the older formula, especially in this shade. I just felt like it didn't have a lot of pigment to it, and it just wasn't worth the money. Everybody was raving about this particular pink shade and how pretty and youthful it made your cheeks look, but it took me a lot of effort to get this to really show up on my skin, and I have light skin. So if you do like a color like this, if this is your vibe, if this is the shade that you are trying to find, look into this duo from Give. It's called Feelin' Cheeky Amplifying Blush Duo in X Girlfriend. I actually have three of these blush duos. I have Lasting Love and I have Stars Aligned. It would help if I showed them to you, right? So we've got Lasting Love, which is a little peachy, and then Stars Aligned, which is neutral and then ex-girlfriend, which is going to give you that cool toned baby pink that I was trying to get from the Dior. It definitely matches more up to the one on the bottom than the top. Bottom line is if you are looking for a perfect cool tone baby pink, look into ex-girlfriend from Give. If I had to talk about all of my favorite blushes from Sephora, we would be here all day. I have another video coming. Five favorite products from five favorite brands. So you will be seeing some more blushes 
in that video. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and you've hit the notification bell so you are made aware of when I have that video going live. Highlighters, the one I brought with me was this one from Rare Beauty. It is the only one I brought with me. It is in the shade Enlighten. It comes in like four, maybe five other shades. Not only do I love it as a highlighter on my cheeks, I also, it's also, ooh, I went a little bit too low there. <laughs> Gotta pay attention, pay attention. Um, I also really like it in my tear ducts, like right here. It's the best, the best tear duct highlight. I just love this so, so much. I also really like this quad from Dior if you wanna splurge a little bit. And then this one from Give. No, that's not the highlighter. That's not the highlighter. Where's the highlighter? Oh, here's the highlighter. It is called Platinum Cowgirl. Also extremely beautiful. And what these two favorite highlighters have in common is that they give me this glow without the emphasis on, without any emphasis on my texture, meaning fine lines, large pores, they last all day long. These are my must-haves. Okay, it's time to talk lips. Here is my little lip liner tray or lip liner holder that I keep on my vanity. And I've got three, no, four different brands of lip liners that you can find at Sephora. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I even have more of the Makeup by Mario lip liners. I've got a couple from Patrick Ta. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from Charlotte Tilbury. And I have a couple from Makeup Forever. So those are my go-to brands for lip pencils. In that other video, the follow-up video to this one, I will be going more into specific shades or picking a specific shade that I personally use and love. But when it comes to recommendations for everyone, what I will tell you is that I think you should check out these brands specifically for lip liners. And you will find one or two or three that are perfect for you. So again, those would be Makeup Forever, Patrick Ta, Makeup by Mario, and Charlotte Tilbury. And then for lipsticks. You know, I am definitely more of a gloss girl. I think a lot of you know that. So in here, the only lip products from Sephora, lipsticks from Sephora that I brought with me were these from Lawless. I actually only brought one and it was the shade Fawn. I brought this with me to California. And then to be honest with you, I brought a bunch of these um, NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. If you went and looked in my lipstick drawer right now, you would definitely see other lipsticks. You would see a lot of Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I think I own all of those. Quite a few Rare Beauty lipsticks, Patrick Ta lipsticks. I do like the Makeup by Mario lipsticks, but most of mine have sort of dried out to the point where they are falling out of the, um, not container, the lipstick packaging. The bullet, the actual lipstick, is falling out of the compartment. So I do have lipsticks, and I also really, really like these Rouge Volupte Shine lipsticks. That's what I have on right now. I did put a little gloss on top, but this is what I have on, this is what I put on first with a Makeup Forever lip liner. And this is in the shade one. It's the YSL Rouge Volupt Shine, and I have a bunch of these. I think they're really, really great. And unfortunately, they don't last as long on the lips as a traditional matte or satin lipstick. And then we have the gloss bin. Now, this is just the gloss bin that's in my vanity. I have got glosses galore in this place. I am a lip gloss and blushaholic, truly. So let's talk about what's in this bin. Well, first let's talk about what was in my bag. In my bag, I had a couple Forget the Filler lip glosses from Lawless. I adore these. They come in so many great shades. They are definitely plumping. They give your lips a little bit more fullness. They do have a little bit of a stickiness to them. So if you don't like any sort of tackiness or stickiness to your lip gloss, then you might not like these. But the shades cannot be beat, especially 
the shade Glazed. I mean, I think you can tell that I really, really like these glosses. I think there's one more in here. Oh, I have a mini. And these were all paid for by me. I did not get these in any PR package. Are there any more? And then also in this bag is a Rode Peptide Lip Treatment, which unfortunately you cannot get at Sephora. And then I have a Patrick Ta Plumping Gloss, as well as a gloss from Tower 28. In fact, I have several glosses from Tower 28. This is another lip gloss formula that is fantastic. And this is actually what I put over the YSL when I did my makeup before this video. Look at that shine. And it's not sticky or heavy at all. Uh, Tower 28 knocked it out of the park with this formula. I also really, really like the Tower 28 blushes. They're cream blushes and I was looking in the wrong bag. Here it is. Tower 28 Multi Liner in Work of Art. And then also in this bin, you will find several Patrick Ta liquid lipsticks, as well as several glosses from Anastasia Beverly Hills. These are also excellent glosses that are very, very shiny, not sticky, come in a stunning range of shades. And then I also really like the Hourglass glosses, but this particular shade is my favorite, and it is one that I wear often, and I always get compliments on it. This is the Unreal High Shine Volumizing Lip Gloss. Unfortunately, the sticker has come off, but I think this is the shade Ignite. And now that I'm talking about Hourglass, I cannot believe I almost forgot about the Hourglass Leopard Palette. Now you may be thinking, Risa, did you do any preparation for this video? Did you even make any lists? I did, I promise you I did. They're right here on the notes on my phone. See, I don't know if you can see, but I've got powders, concealers, powders pressed, blush, primers, lip liners, hair treatments, all of it. I did make a list. I don't know how I forgot about the Hourglass Leopard Palette. It is definitely worth splurging on. If you would like to see it in action, please take a look at my perfect fall makeup tutorial that I recently uploaded. I use almost every shade in this palette in that video. So I 100% recommend picking it up during the sale if it does not sell out. As of this moment, right now, when I'm filming this video, it is in stock, but the sale hasn't started yet. Alrighty, because I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little bit tired. I'm going to not speed through, but kind of give you some rapid fire recommendations for hair and skin. The bulk of my skincare is really not available at Sephora. For my cleanser, I use one from Elemis. However, I have been trying out this Glow Recipe Avocado Ceramide Moisture Barrier Cleanser that was sent to me by Glow Recipe, and I am really, really liking it. I'm also testing out one from Tula. I bought a sample size to take with me to Los Angeles, and I used that the two nights I stayed over in LA, and I thought it was really, really great. So I may actually pick that up during the sale myself. Oh, there's another primer I forgot, and it's on my list right here. I'm losing my mind, because you know what? It's sitting right in front of me. The Forget the Filler, Skin Plumping Line Smoothing Perfecting Cream. This is also a primer and a moisturizer. I say also because I remember talking to you about the Charlotte Tilbury, which is a primer and sunscreen. This is a primer and moisturizer, and it is so good. However, I do still also love my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I find Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream to be a little bit of a polarizing product. I feel like people either love it or they hate it. I love it. But honestly, for the past two months, I've been using the Lawless product, not the Charlotte Tilbury. As for serums and treatments and the like, I mostly stick to Dermatica, which is a brand that I've spoken about in quite a few of my videos. Not really recently. I will be working with them again in December. It's a customized serum slash treatment product that I use. I will link the Dermatica website for you to check it out if you want to. And then again, I will be talking about it in December. And I have 
I don't remember which ones they are, but I have several videos. If I can find one, which I'm sure I can if I dig, if I look hard enough, I will try to link a video where I talk about Dermatica. How about that? Moving on to hair. This is currently what's in my shower right now, the Bondi Boost HG Shampoo and Conditioner. I also have the Bondi Boost Miracle Mask. For smoothing out my hair, I love this product from Orbe. And for achieving volume at the crown of my head, I love this product from Olaplex. And then these are my two favorite hair oils. This one is from Virtue, it is their healing oil. And then this is Orbe's Gold Lust. I find both of these to be very, very hydrating, nourishing. They take down frizz, they give your hair some shine, but they don't weigh your hair down. This Virtue hair oil was the one I read they used on the set of the Barbie movie to keep everyone's hair looking smooth and shiny and, oh, smells so, so good. And so these are my current favorite fragrances. I do have the full size bottles, but these are the ones that I brought with me on my trip. I know you're probably thinking, Risa, that's too many fragrances. Why do you need four? I don't know why I needed four. I just threw them all in the bag. First up is Replica's Autumn Vibes. This has keynotes of Redberry, Cardamom, and Cedarwood Moss. Up next is Terry Mugler's Alien Goddess Intense, which has notes of bergamot, jasmine, and vanilla. And I also love Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. This one has keynotes of black cherry, tonka bean, and almond, followed by the Valentino Born in Roma. I sprayed this the other night before going out, and my friend and fellow YouTuber, Michelle Wong, who was also going out with me, came to my hotel room and when she arrived, we gave each other a hug because it was the first our first night in LA and she was like, oh my gosh, you smell so good. And to get that compliment from her, Michelle, who only uses the top, top tier, high end of high end fragrances, for her to say, oh my gosh, I love that scent, that my friends is high praise. And just to be clear, this is the Born in Roma Intense. I just looked at Sephora on Sephora's website and there is a Born in Roma. This is the intense version. And then this is the newest addition to my perfume collection. It is the Love Shack Fancy Eau de Parfum in Moon Dance. This is also spectacular. I've talked about it in I think my last two videos. I bought it about a month ago when it launched and I cannot put it down. It is so nice. And I'm going to finish off this recommendations video with my number one pick for setting spray. I own this in several travel sizes as well as every jumbo size that has ever come out. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It is my favorite. I have used pretty much nothing else for the past couple of years. I do, however, want to try the one size mattifying setting spray. However, it is always out of stock. So of course, I'm going to upload a haul after I get all of my VIB sale savings event shopping done. So again, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. I also post reminders of new videos over on Instagram. So if you're not following me there and you have an Instagram account, I hope that you will consider following me there as well as on TikTok. Every product will be listed and linked down below in the description box of this video, as well as YouTube shopping links. There should be something that comes up that says view products. I hope that you will consider using my tags and links because that is how I keep this channel going. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave those for me in the comments and please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.